Hello, my lovely third grade. How are you? Hope that everything is good with you. Uh, you did excellent quizzes. I'm so proud of you. Keep it up with good work. Continue like this, and I'm really, really so proud, proud of you. And uh, I love you so much. And uh, now we are going to continue with um, new lessons uh, for today. We are going to have lesson number. Four. Uh, from unit 3 uh, you're going to have pages uh, 178 uh, 178 sorry till uh, page 181 uh, so we are going to speak about uh, communities long ago how it was first communities uh, so since the ancient time or times very long ago uh, people have lived in communities in even the earliest groups uh, people often share the government and culture some of those communities grow to become great civilization and civilization is a large group of people living in well organized way ideas uh, uh, for some of those ancient civilization are still used in modern times and modern uh, means uh, is how we describe the time we live today. Uh, from this part, please understand, uh, I remember well, what's meaning of ancient times, what is civilization and what is modern. Okay? Uh, one of the oldest civilization um, is... Uh, one of the, uh, mo the oldest um, uh, and the earliest civilization uh, is Mesopotamia uh, and it was uh, in uh, southwestern Asia. Uh, it was uh, a place uh, called uh, Mesopotamia uh, and um, it had uh, one of the oldest uh, earliest city. Uh, people built them in part of uh, Mesopotamia and called Samar. The Sumerian developed many new ideas and inventions. They built carts with uh, wheels, cars, carts with wheels. Uh, wheels made uh, it easier for people to move things from place to place. And I must tell you that uh, these people uh, were very smart, very clever. Um, writing was another important idea developed by Sumerians and before people learned to write they had to keep track of uh, things by remembering them. Uh, writing gave the Sumerians a way to record important information uh, and their history. And um, one of the very important and the, the, the things um, how uh, Mesopotamia was um, famous uh, is uh, about uh, Babylon city and uh, about Babylon garden and uh, please take a look in this map you can see how uh, in which area exactly uh, was uh, this ancient uh, civilization uh, and this area between Tigre and Euphrat uh, river and Middle East it's uh, uh, very uh, important uh, area and uh, in that time was very good to have a, a sta state and country in this Now area. I would like to show you uh, one uh, short the story uh, of writing about uh, astronomy and civilization. And law. Please watch carefully the story of learn, civilization uh, itself a lot of begins in one place. Not and Egypt, like it, this. not Greece, not Rome. The story of writing of Mesopotamia. Astronomy. The story of civilization Mesopotamia itself. is an exceedingly fertile plain place. situated between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. For five millennia, this small strip of land situated in what is today Iraq, Kuwait, and Syria fostered innovations that would change the world forever. Inhabited for nearly 12,000 years, Mesopotamia's stable climate, rich soil, and steady supply of fresh water made it ideal for agriculture to develop and thrive. About 6,000 years ago, seemingly overnight, 
some of these agricultural settlements blossomed into some of the world's first cities. In the period between 4000 and 3100 BC, Mesopotamia was dotted with a constellation of competing city-states. At one point, they were unified under the Akkadian Empire and then broke apart, forming the empires of Assyria and Babylon. Despite their constant warfare, innovation and development thrived in ancient Mesopotamia. They built on a monumental scale, from palaces to ziggurats, mammoth temples served as ritual locations to commune with the gods. They also developed advanced mathematics, including a base 60 system that created a 60-second minute, a 60-minute hour, and a 360-degree circular angle. The Babylonians used their sophisticated system of mathematics to map and study the sky. They divided one Earth year into 12 periods. Each was named after the most prominent constellations in the heavens, a tradition later adopted by the Greeks to create the zodiac. They also divided the week into seven days, naming each after their seven gods embodied by the seven observable planets in the sky. But perhaps the most impactful innovation to come out of Mesopotamia is literacy. What began as simple pictures scrawled onto wet clay to keep track of goods and wealth developed into a sophisticated writing system by the year 3200 BC. This writing system would come to be called cuneiform in modern times and proved so flexible that, over the span of 3,000 years, it would be adapted for over a dozen different major languages and countless uses including this recording the law of the Babylonian king Hammurabi, in which time. formed the basis of a standardized so justice system. Over the span of 3, years, it would but be Mesopotamia's success became its undoing. Babylon, in particular, proved too rich a state to resist outside envy. In 539 BC, the Persian king Cyrus conquered Babylon and sealed his control over the entirety of Mesopotamia. For centuries, this area became a territory of foreign empires. Eventually, Mesopotamia would fade, like its kings, into the mist of history, and its cities would sink beneath the sands of Iraq. But its ideas would prevail in literacy, law, math, astronomy, and the gift of civilization Mesopotamia itself. Mesopotamia would fade like its kings into the mist of history, and its cities would sink beneath the sands of Iraq. But its ideas would prevail in literacy, law, math, astronomy, and the gift of civilization itself. Uh, I hope that you like this. Um, really, it's incredible sorry, civilization and um, really a lot of things started from them and now we continue with Egypt. Uh, Egypt is uh, as well one of ancient civilization. The ancient civilization of Egypt in Africa is known for pyramids. An Egyptian pyramid uh, is a tomb, tomb or burial place for that king or queen. I know that most of you know uh, about this everything. I will tell you a few more information about uh, pyramids, about the way how they build. And uh, still um, people and science didn't discover how actually they carry all that uh, blocks and rocks and so on. And um, uh, later I will show you uh, one more video about Egypt. And for all this uh, civilization, I will try to explain you further and to provide you further information about each civilization that you can can understand why it was so important. And um, for me, it's very important that you understand how it actually ancient Egyptians were very clever and very smart. And they were like you remember previous previous lessons that I explained it to you about buildings, about changing uh, communities. And now we again speak about this, how they change community. They change community only because they build something amazing, something incredible. And um, 
uh, to build the Great Pyramid took 20 years to build. As many as 10,000 people worked on it uh, all times. Can you imagine this? And especially it's important how they um, carried that uh, uh, blocks. Uh, so the Great Pyramid is the largest of the pyramids that are still standing today. It is more than um, uh, 450 uh, weight high. Uh, it was built about uh, 4,500 years ago for an Egyptian pharaoh. Uh, or king named uh, Khufu. The pyramids were made by uh, staking huge stone blocks in layers. Uh, some of the blocks in the Great Pyramid weighed uh, 5,000 pounds. Can you imagine this? How they carry this? And the ancient Egyptians did not have wheels and pulleys uh, uh, for moving things. They put the uh, green, uh, uh, green blocks uh, in place by pushing them uh, up ramps um, on rollers made of uh, loops. So it was very difficult to uh, build the pyramids and it still we don't know how actually they made uh, it's uh, unknown uh, still for us. Um, in 100% to understand their way of building. Uh, now pay attention. Uh, um, I will. I prepared one uh, good video about ancient Egypt, so watch carefully and listen. Okay. The ancient Egyptian civilization lasted for over 3,000 years and became one of the most powerful and iconic civilizations in history. Powerful and iconic civilizations in history. At its height. Ancient Egypt's empire stretched as far north as modern-day Syria and as far south as today's Sudan. But long before it was an empire, ancient Egypt was a series of small, independent city-states that bloomed along North Africa's Nile River. The city-states were divided into two regions and named according to the flow of the Nile. Upper Egypt in the south, which was upstream, and Lower Egypt in the north, which was downstream. By about 3100 BC, the two halves united, thereby creating one Egyptian state that lasted for millennia. The reign of this civilization can be divided into three major periods of prosperity, called the Old, Middle, and New Kingdoms, and two periods of instability in between, called the First and Second Intermediate Periods. Called the first and second intermediate Guiding period. the Egyptian people was a succession of about 300 the rulers, was a succession often referred of about to as pharaohs. Rulers, Pharaoh, which means great pharaohs. house in Egyptian, Pharaoh, was never the ruler's formal title. It only became synonymous with the ruling individual in modern times, thanks to its use in the Hebrew Bible. These rulers, who were not always men, nor Egyptian, were considered were protectors of the people and served as divine liaisons between humanity and the hundreds of gods they worshipped. After the rulers passed away, ancient Egyptians believed they then became gods. To prepare their journey into the afterlife, the rulers constructed elaborate tombs, including the Great Pyramids at Giza and underground mausoleums in the Valley of the Kings. Rulers filled their tombs with all the items they could need in the afterlife, including gold, jewelry, food, drink, and even pets. Preparing for this journey to the gods also involved mummifying one's body. The deceased's corpse was embalmed wrapped in hundreds of yards of linen and placed inside the tomb so the body could be reanimated in the afterlife. To this day, structures like the Great Pyramids are a testament to the role of religion in ancient Egyptians' lives. But they also represent the innovative and cultural might of the Egyptian people. Innovations in mathematics and written language in particular propelled their civilization to success. Math, specifically measurement mathematics, helped Egyptians understand and harness their world with numbers like no other civilization had before. They developed a new form of measurement called the cubit, 
It was used to design massive structures, such as the Great Pyramid, with remarkable geometrical precision. The Egyptians also measured time. By combining mathematics with astronomy, they established a 24-hour division to the day and created a solar calendar which was the first dating and system in history to feature 365 days in one year. Lastly, Egyptians developed methods to measure Lastly, and survey land Egyptians around the Nile River. These civil engineering feats the made way for the construction of dams, canals, and irrigation systems that helped farming and agriculture to flourish in the Nile Valley. In addition to mathematical concepts, the ancient Egyptians the also created written languages to describe the world around them. The oldest and probably most well-known of these is hieroglyphic writing. This system was developed around 3150 BC during the Old Kingdom and has over 700 pictorial characters. It was used to inscribe monuments and pottery and predominantly serve a decorative or ceremonial purpose. Soon after, another ancient form of writing, called hieratic, developed out of the hieroglyphic system. It was a form of cursive that was written in ink and served a more functional purpose. Unlike its more formal predecessor, hieratic was written on another ancient Egyptian innovation, papyrus. Papyrus was a type of paper derived from the papyrus plant, which grew plentifully along the Nile River. This medium gave the ancient Egyptians a new avenue of communication and record keeping that allowed their civilization's administrative skill to grow and their culture to spread for thousands of years. As with all great empires, Ancient Egypt As with came all to an great end. Empires, it was eventually Egypt conquered after a series of invasions, including those by the Persian Empire in the 4th century BC and the Roman Empire around 30 BC. And the Roman Empire Not many civilizations can claim a lifespan of over 3,000 years, let alone one that made vast cultural contributions that still resonate in modern times. Ancient Egypt, with its linguistic and mathematical innovations, spirituality and religion, and extensive political and military might, set a high standard for all civilizations that followed. Set a high standard for all civilizations that followed. I know that you remember from the previous lesson about irrigation system, about dam, uh, about canal. Uh, so now you know who invented this and who actually first uh, started with this kind of uh, um, uh, supplying water and so on. Uh, okay, uh, we spoke a lot about Egypt. We know uh, so many things and. Um, about papyrus and uh, writing skills and so on, but uh, actually the first civilization who invented paper and ca uh, kind of writing was uh, ancient China, Chinese. And the ancient Chinese uh, also invented paper and printing. First they wrote on paper with brushes and ink. So actually everything uh, was started in, um, in China, not in Egypt. In Egypt, they had uh, different uh, tools, how to make paper in China, different, but long before uh, Egyptians. Uh, later, they invented the way to print and copies of pages. Uh, they craved uh, the writing for page on wooden block. They put ink on the block and uh, pressed it again uh, against paper to make a print. And this let uh, them make many copies of page much faster than uh, they could uh, write them by hand. Uh, so um, uh, for for this civilization I prepare, I would like to uh, teach you more about uh, uh, this ancient people, ancient civilization. So watch carefully. And the
The first real emperor of ancient China was Jin Shi Huang. Born Yin Shang in 259 BC, he united the different kingdoms in 221 BC and ruled them all. He established a standard writing system, money, weights, and measures. He built roads and erected beautiful palaces in the capital, Xi'an. The empire he forged turned out to be so strong it has survived for thousands of years and is even named for him. The word China comes from one of his names. Him, the word of course, that makes it sound names. like he was a benevolent and enlightened course, ruler, but he wasn't. Like Definitely he was not by modern ruler, standards. He, he didn't like scholars or books, burying some scholars alive and burning many, many books, including those by Confucius. He thought education for the common people took time away from growing crops. Emperor Jin's rule was so cruel that he lived in fear that he would be harmed in retaliation. It said he rarely slept in the same palace two nights in a row. He also sent decoys who resembled him to meetings where his life might be in danger. He died in 210 BC after drinking a potion he thought would give him eternal life. One of Jin's most lasting achievements was the famous Great Wall. Wall of China. Around the year 220 BC, Emperor Qin began the huge undertaking of connecting the many different walls around China, some that were as old as 400 BC, and forging one enormous wall to keep out invaders. Built entirely by hand, the Great Wall snakes up mountain ranges, down into valleys, and across the deserts of northern China, stretching close to 4,300 miles. It's about 25 feet high and 15 to 30 feet wide. In addition to defense, the wall provided a way to transport men and supplies throughout China and to communicate with smoke signals. More than 2,000 years later, it continues to be one of the wonders of the world. After Emperor Qin died, Liu Bang became the first emperor of the Han Dynasty. Under the Han, China was no longer isolated, and it was during this time that the Silk Road was established. Established, which was, was a network of trade routes between China and the ancient Western lands. China traded their silks and spices with the people of India, Persia, Arabia, North Africa, and even Europe. The nomadic traders who crossed the Silk Road took a dangerous trek, facing bandits, harsh climates, and rough terrain. But eventually, Chinese goods found their way to cities as far away as Rome. The Forbidden City is another amazing site in China. China, often the associated with its ancient past. But compared to the Great Wall and the Terracotta Soldiers, it's positively modern. Only 600 years old, that is. It was home to emperors during the Ming and Qing dynasties. Construction began on the palace in 1406, and millions of workers labored to build it over 14 years. When the Forbidden City was completed, a 26-foot wall and a 20-foot moat kept people out. For 500 years, years, most people were forbidden to enter the palace that 24 emperors called home, hence the name, the Forbidden City. With 900 rooms and 800 buildings, it's the world's largest palace complex. In 1949, it was open to all citizens of China and is now a museum. Okay, um, children, thank you so much for your attention. Hope that this was um, very interesting for you. Uh, in next uh, class, uh, next um, online session, we are going to learn about uh, uh, ancient Greece, uh, ancient Rome, Mali, and we are going to make a revision about uh, entire lesson. I wish you a fantastic day, enjoy, have fun, and uh, don't forget to study. Uh, see you soon. Bye!